functional groups are groups of reactive atoms or bonds or both in a molecule, in an organic molecule. So it's a group of atoms or bonds that are reactive. And these functional groups dictate a lot of properties of the molecule, including reactivity. So this video is going to give you an introduction to just simply identifying a functional group when you see it, when you're looking at a line structure or a Lewis structure or a condensed structure, you can identify these groups of atoms, uh, hopefully know the functional group's name, and throughout the entire year, you'll learn how to predict the reactivity of each functional group. So again, just to be clear, the goal at this point is just simply to know a functional group when you see it and know some of the functional groups by their names. And we are going to start with a functional group called alkyl halide. Alkyl halide. The alkyl halide functional group is a molecule that has a carbon halogen bond. Remember that X is the symbol we use to indicate any sort of halogen like chlorine or a bromine or whatever. So an example of an alkyl halide would be this molecule right here. I'm using line notation because you're experts at it. And this molecule has a carbon bromine bond. That's what we're indicating over here carbon bromine bond and that particular bond with those atoms is what makes this molecule an alkyl halide. So let's, um, let's highlight that this is the functional group of the molecule. A lot of times when we are representing functional groups of molecules, we will abbreviate the non-functional portion of the molecule with the letter R. And the letter R is usually used to indicate hydrocarbons, carbons and hydrogen atoms. Um, and then also with the alkyl halide, since we also have an abbreviation for the halide part, the X, um, this is like a doubly abbreviated functional group representation, Rx. Uh, and this might not be making a ton of sense to you right now, but as you see more functional groups, I think that this will start to make more sense. So that's functional group type number one. Next, we are going to look at the alkene functional group, alkene. The alkene functional group is a double bond between two carbon atoms. So let's draw an example of a molecule that has that functional group. We could draw... This molecule right here, this molecule has the alkene functional group. This is the location of the alkene functional group right there. And if we wanted to abbreviate the alkene functional group the same way we abbreviated up here, we would want to draw the carbon-carbon double bond because that is the functional group and then use the letter R to abbreviate whatever else might be attached to the two carbons of the alkene. So this would be, this would be a generic representation or abbreviation of an alkene. Similar to the alkene, we have the alkyne functional group, alkyne, and this has a carbon-carbon triple bond. So if we wanted to draw a picture of an alkyne, it might look like this. And this is the alkyne functional group. And if we wanted to abbreviate the alkyne functional group using the R's, we would want to draw the carbon-carbon triple bond because that's the important part. And then we're going to use the letter R to represent whatever else might be attached to those carbon atoms. Next up, we have the alcohol functional group. The alcohol functional group has a carbon atom 
that is bonded to an oxygen that is bonded to a hydrogen. So it may look like, let's draw an alcohol, something like that. And this would be the alcohol portion of the molecule. And if we wanted to abbreviate it generically, we would use this notation right here. So in this abbreviation, we're not including this particular carbon, we're just including the OH group. Remember that R represents hydrocarbon, it represents a carbon chain. And we have a molecule, a functional group that's similar to an alcohol. This is called the ether functional group. The ether functional group is a carbon that's bonded to an oxygen that's bonded to another carbon. So it may look like this. And the ether part portion of this molecule is right here, the oxygen that is in between two carbon atoms. To abbreviate the ether functional group, we would use ROR, like that. And then the last one that I'm gonna show you is one that goes by several names. So this is technically the aromatic functional group, but it can also be called the aryl functional group or the benzene functional group. And the benzene is the, the most incorrect name for this functional group, um, but it's still, even though it's most incorrect, it's still used pretty commonly. Benzene is the name of a molecule that is a six-membered cyclic molecule that has alternating double single bonds. And that particular group of atoms with that particular bonding pattern is very common in a lot of different molecules. So all by itself, this particular molecule is benzene. But if we attach other stuff to it, then we have the functional group, which we would technically call the aromatic or the aryl functional group. But sometimes we would call it the benzene functional group or a benzene group. And this um, doesn't really abbreviate very well, so we don't really have this R type of abbreviation. Um, we could it doesn't, it doesn't really shorten the notation, but if we did want to abbreviate it, we would just do something like that, um, where we are highlighting the benzene ring portion of the aromatic group and using the letter R to represent everything else. So for the functional groups that you're seeing here, these are the ones that it's most important that you learn quickly because these are functional groups that we'll study in the beginning of organic chemistry. So these are the ones that you'll be learning about first. This is not a complete list though. You do have more functional groups that you need to learn as well. So moving on, these ones, I'm not saying that these are not important. These are just ones that you won't be learning about right away. So it's not as important to learn them as quickly as you can. So what we're going to do next is the ketone functional group. And the ketone functional group has a carbon oxygen double bond and the carbon is bonded to two other carbon atoms, which I could just write as Rs. An example of a ketone would be this molecule right here. And the ketone functional group in the molecule is right there. And if we wanted to abbreviate, generically abbreviate the ketone functional group, we would just use the same representation that we are using up above. So actually, I wanna make an edit to that. I wanna go back to making those carbon atoms. And hopefully you'll see why when we look at the next example. A really similar functional group is the aldehyde functional group, aldehyde. This also has a carbon oxygen double bond, but it has a hydrogen that's directly attached to the carbon. And then um, whatever is attached to the other side of the carbon, this actually doesn't matter. It could be another carbon or it could be a hydrogen. 
So here is an example of an aldehyde. And I will tell you that aldehydes, this is one situation where organic chemists tend to break their own rules about line structures and actually draw in a carbon-hydrogen bond. And I think personally, I think the reason that we draw this hydrogen, even though it should be excluded from the line structure, is just because the molecule looks more symmetrical. It's just better to look at, um, more visually appealing when we include it. In the, in the line drawing. So there is an example of a molecule that's an aldehyde and here would be an abbreviated like generic version of the aldehyde. And then we have a couple more functional groups. These are ones that you'll learn about later on in the year. Carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid functional group also has a carbon-oxygen double bond. The, one, the carbon has an OH on one end and something else on the other side. So an example might look like this. This would be a carboxylic acid, and this would be the portion of the molecule that is the carboxylic acid group. Similar to carboxylic acid, we have the ester, not to be confused with the ether. The ester has a structure that's very similar to a carboxylic acid, except for we have replaced the OH with an OR. So this molecule would have, instead of an OH, it would have a continuing carbon chain on the other side of the molecule. So this is the ester functional group. And we have a couple more that are similar to carboxylic acids. We have the acid halide, which is also called an acyl halide. This is like a carboxylic acid, instead of an OH group, we have a halogen on the end of the molecule. So here is an example of an acid halide that's using a chlorine as the halogen. We also have a molecule called an amid, amid. And this guy has a nitrogen attached to the carbon-oxygen double bond. The nitrogen is going to have a few things on it that don't really matter. They might be carbon chains. They might be just hydrogens. So let's draw a little bit of both. This would be an amide. And here is the portion of the molecule that is the amide functional group. And then we have a, two more to go. One similar, an anhydride. The anhydride functional group is two carbon-oxygen double bonds connected by a single bonded oxygen, like that. So here is an example of an anhydride. And here is the anhydride fu functional group. And then last but not least, we have the amine the amine is a nitrogen that has three bonds that are to either hydrogens or carbon chains. So here is an example of an amine, and this is the amine portion of the molecule.